Hi, I'm Scott Hards, back with another session of Boss Builds. The last time we took a look at getting the parts off the runner and cementing them together, which I'm sure everybody found to be pretty easy. Today, however, I'd like to talk about paint. And paint, frankly, can be extremely confusing and intimidating if you've never used it on a model before. For starters, there's so many different kinds of paint. There's lacquers, enamels, acrylics, and some people even use oil paints on their kits. And of course, you can brush them on, use spray cans, or even buy and use an airbrush. There's a lot to learn. Perhaps on our next Boss Builds project, we could take a look at explaining all of the good points, bad points, and best uses for all the different kinds of paint. But for now, I'd like to keep it simple. For our LFA, which we have going over here, I'm going to brush almost all of the paints on the model by using acrylics from a company in Spain called Vallejo. Now these are really great paints. They're available all over the world. They're inexpensive. They're available in hundreds of colors. They thin and clean easily with water, don't have any unpleasant odor, and are completely non-toxic. You can get them from us or from any well-stocked hobby shop or art supply store. If you want to try working with paints for the first time and don't have Vallejo available, I'd recommend that you start by working with another brand of acrylics, something like uh, Tamiya's stuff, GSI Creos, or even testers. Now car kits and aircraft kits typically have cockpit, suspension, or other details that are going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to paint after the kit is assembled. So you'll need to be painting during the assembly process. Many military, naval, and science fiction kits, however, don't have that problem. So depending on the kit, you might be able to do all of your assembly before starting any of the painting work. Now on our LFA, however, uh, there's a lot of underbody details that a brush won't be able to reach after assembly. So we're going to need to paint the parts and sub-assemblies as we're working. Let's take a look at how it's done. Of course, to get started painting your model, you'll need some brushes. Stay away from the cheap ones, especially those with plastic bristles. A very good natural hair brush will only set you back a few dollars or euros or whatever you're paying with, so get something nice that won't shed bristles onto whatever you're painting. For this project, we'll need several small detailing brushes. Here you see my trusty zero, double zero, and triple zero sized brushes. You may want to get a number one or a number two size as well. Have a dish of water handy nearby. You'll need that for cleaning your brushes and also for adding a few drops of water to thin the paint. The assembly instructions are clearly marked with paint color codes for each part that needs to be painted. Make sure you confirm exactly what colors to put where before you start work. There will be a chart in the instructions which matches those codes to the color names. Always shake any paint before use. Vallejo comes packaged in these really convenient eyedropper style bottles, so I just put a small amount of paint onto a sheet of paper right there on my workbench and then use a brush to thin it with a bit of water. Once you're comfortable with the consistency, paint it onto the parts using long strokes down the length of the part. Now here, since the part and the paint are so close in color, it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing. But in cases like this, when the color of the plastic and the paint are very similar, a single coat of paint will usually do the trick. However, if you're trying to cover black plastic with white paint or something similar to that, you may need two coats. But don't try to put too much paint on in a single coat. Two thin coats will do a much better job. After you've finished painting with a particular color, make sure that you rinse out your brush thoroughly in a dish of water. After I rinse it out, I then always use a couple of tissues to soak up the excess water from the brush, and then I store them flat. Some people also prefer to hang their brushes while they're letting them dry. Getting the consistency of the paint right isn't hard, but it is important. If your paint is too thick when you put it on, you'll end up obscuring details, as you can see here. Although the paint will shrink up onto the plastic somewhat as it dries, the results are not going to be good. On the other hand, if your paint is too thin, it won't cling to the plastic, and it will end up settling in the low spots only, or just kind of rolling around on the plastic surface. One of the great things about working with water-soluble acrylics like Vallejo is that if you make a big mistake, you can usually wipe or wash off the paint in the problem area and start again, as long as you do so before the paint dries. Depending on the shape of the parts that you're painting, finding a good way to hold them can be a challenge. For very small parts, painting them while they're still on the runner is often a good solution. 
In some cases, like with this engine here, I exploited the fact that there's a hole in the transmission case and I made a simple holder from a piece of scrap runner. I just took my hobby knife, sharpened one end of the plastic, and stuck it into the hole for a snug fit. It's always a good idea to read ahead and study the assembly instructions before you start work. One reason is that you can identify the separate parts that all need to be painted the same color, and it's much easier to do them all at once rather than having several repetitive cycles of painting and then cleaning your brush. On this LFA kit, you can see that there are several different underbody parts that all need to be painted black, and since they're mostly larger parts and all on the same runner, I've decided to use can spray lacquer rather than brush paints to finish them. As usual, you want to avoid the really cheap spray paints in cases like this, because they often use pigments that haven't been ground as finely as the pigment in sprays that are specifically designed for models, and that can end up obscuring the detail on the parts you spray. Of course, shake the spray can well before you get started, and then when you do, use short, quick bursts to paint. Stay at least 30 centimeters or about a foot back from what you're spraying, as you want to make sure you don't get too much paint on the parts. Unless you have a spray booth or other special ventilation equipment at home, spraying lacquer paints indoors will literally stink up your entire house for hours and could cause anybody living with you to demand an early end to your hobby activities. Not only that, it could give you the worst headache you've ever had, so make sure you only spray lacquer in a well-ventilated area and also wear a mask. That's why, as you can see here, I'm spraying outdoors on my driveway. Of course, this strategy doesn't work on windy days. More often than not, dust and dirt will get blown onto the freshly painted surface, and the parts themselves may even get kicked around in the wind. So that is about all you need to know to paint all of the little bits and uh, the inner details of your kit. And uh, when we get to the, uh, the body shell part here, there's some other spray techniques and polishing techniques that I'll be showing off when we get to this. But uh, so far, what you've seen in today's video should be enough uh, to let you get uh, as far as we've gotten here. Now let me show that off just a little bit. Uh, we've got all of the drivetrain and exhaust and suspension uh, all completed here, the engine. Uh, this all turns like it should on any good car kit. And of course, these will go together uh, eventually like this. Uh, and you're not going to see some of this detail in the end, but uh, it'll be a very cool underside uh, on the LFA here. Now in our next video, we're going to talk about sticky stuff. We're going to talk about uh, using instant glue and about using masking seals and also some of the, uh, the metallic transfers and stuff that also go on this. So we'll take a look at that in our next segment. We'll see you then.